What's going on YouTube? We're back at it for another video and today we'll be doing the Consecrated Snowfield Guide. Now, it's a bit of a larger area, but where we're going to start off from is the Grand Lift of Rolled. You'll need the Medallion of Hallig Tree in order to get into this area. If you don't know how to grab that up, head over to my uh, Mountaintops of the Giant Guide. I'll have that linked down in the description if you need that. But we've got more than a few things to cover in this, so let's get straight into it. Now, once you activate the Grand Lift of uh, Rolled, we'll have that green medallion for the Hallig Tree. That'll be the indicator that you've chosen the right uh, medallion. If you haven't chosen the right one, it's going to be red. You're going to end up back at the mountaintops of the Giants, so you'll need to hit left or right on the D-pad or whatever switches the uh, object once you're on the circular plate right here to activate the lift. But from this point, we'll be able to walk out and enter into a very small dungeon if you could call that, we'll go straight through this room, open up these doors. Now there's going to be more than a few of these uh, land squids inside of this area. Small and big. Big ones can be extremely devastating. Oh, also some tiny soldiers in here, or mini men, whatever you'd like to call them. We'll essentially go straight across. Mini, uh, or, whew. well there's the big, big land squid right there. Now these guys, they, they seem uh, very dangerous, and they can be if you're straight in front of them best bet is to get onto their side. If you're at the side of them, they can't really turn all that well. You won't be doing too much damage to them, but you'll be able to get them to that staggered point on their uh, tentacle knees, I suppose. Then be able to get to the front of them and deal some heavy damage. About the best way you can get it done, and you can avoid their damage very easily as long as you can keep circling around them and keep maintaining that you're on their side. They will be able to jump at certain moments and then plop down, but once they're plopped down, they're, they're not going to be able to turn all that well. Now up here, there's more than a few of those mini men. I'd say probably go up into this hallway, kind of pull those in, take those out, and then start uh, hitting on that land squid. Not going to be too hard, but I did die here at one point. Land squid came down, and as soon as those tentacles get uh, whacking you, man, that stagger's unreal. It's extremely frustrating, but from that point... We'll have a glow board over on our left. A couple of trolls writing on the ground trying to tell you that there's a uh, hidden wall there, but there's not. We'll grab up that Lost Grace, and now we'll be in the consecrated uh, snowfield. We'll essentially be following these lights for this first portion, but we're going straight for the map. We're going to need it, considering, as you'll already notice, we've got a bit of a field of view or, or field of vision impairment for this uh, first portion of this area. But over here on the left, after we're following the lights, we'll have a scarab with that somber smithing stone. And then just up ahead, we'll find a little caravan. Now, if you do choose to take these guys out and open it up, you will get a torch that does inflict uh, sleep. Sleep? Sleeping? Something along that. It'll build up on sleep. Don't know how effective it is, but for somebody out there that may be using torches, but essentially from the point when you hit that caravan, we'll be heading over to the left. You'll want to make a mark on that. Uh, it'll look like a lighthouse on the map that's not uncovered yet. You'll want to go down that main path. We want to grab that up considering we don't have much field of vision in this first portion. Very hard to see. Very frustrating. Don't know if there's any way to take it out. But as soon as we get about 25% into this map, we'll finally get to an open area where we can finally see. Boom, we're already in it. But for that first portion, it's going to be consistently just destroyed field of view. Now we'll grab up the map right there, and from this location, we'll need to head back to where we just came from, which is going to be that uh, that small dungeon that we popped out from the uh, Grand Lift of Rolled. Can't remember the name of it. That's the uh, location right there. Now we'll be following these lights all the way down until we meet up with a, uh, or we'll grab a Lost Grace along the way, but we'll need to continue following these little lights, these little fireflies. There's a couple of items along the path with this as well, including one of those golden seeds. Now, I know it can be a bit disorienting. Trust me, it's very irritating, but if you've already taken out that caravan, just go straight by it. Don't even deal with those guys. I mean, those crossbow guys are as deadly as ever and more irritating than you can possibly imagine. But from that point... There'll be some lefts and rights with these uh, fireflies in some moments, like that golden tree back there. But in front of us, we'll start to have moments where there's going to be some of these uh, civilian undead characters will be holding the lights themselves. So you'll need to be on the watch out for that. I think we're about to come up on one 
boom, like that right there. It's about the only way you can guide yourself through to get to this next lost graze point, which is going to be the main one that we'll use for covering this right portion over here. But you'll notice it, it does all sorts of twists and turns, can be very frustrating to go along with. And up here on our right, after we've dealt with this crossbow guy, we'll have a, a couple of people kind of digging at the ground. Boom, a bear will pop up. I'm going to have to deal with that. But lucky enough, once we do take it down, we will get a larval tear out of this bear. So it's kind of worth it in a way if you're looking to respec later on or just have multiple opportunities to respec, maybe even testing some things out by this point. Needed to put some points elsewhere. It's another one of those chances to completely uh, rework your build. Now it's going to take some time, and obviously bears are very dangerous. You really don't want to face them head on, but you constantly kind of want to do that circle strat, avoid their attacks, close in for one or two swings, and then keep going for that wide berth outward. It's going to take some time, but it's a lot more worth it to get it done like that than uh, trying to charge in and then immediately just getting ripped over and over. We all know how that can be. This is Elden Ring. But from that point, we'll start to follow the fireflies again. And by the end of it, we're going to be reaching our next lost graze point, which is going to be on the edge of that little snowstorm effect. Now, from this point, we'll start heading over to the left. You'll be a couple of those uh, electric orbs starting to shoot at you. Do be mindful of those. You're going, you're going to want to make sure that you're uh, at full speed with the alpaca that whole time. You don't want to get struck by that. It's going to be devastating, and it will end you fairly quickly. Do avoid those at all costs. Now, by this point, we'll hit over onto this very left edge. There'll be a, a cliff going off over here. And on our right, we'll have a couple more of those uh, ancestral warriors. I believe only two of them, but do watch out. They, they don't stagger very easy, and they could make quick work of you. Barely quickly. But after we've taken them out, in between them, it's going to be in our next talisman right here. That greatly increases our robustness. Not exactly sure how beneficial robustness is, but... But some of those builds out there, somebody that uses it substantially could be beneficial. We'll have another smithing stone right there. And over on our right, before we head into the dungeon that was on our left, we'll kind of go through these runes. Not a whole lot over here, but there is one particular item that's going to be beneficial. Now these, uh, these trolls or ogres, whatever you'd like to call them, are going to be spitting out some madness. It can be pretty devastating, but lucky enough, as long as you're on that horseback or alpaca, whatever you'd like to call it, You'll be able to make pretty quick work of them. May take some time, but it's a good bit of runes if you're looking to stack some up by this point. By the end of this, you should have at least one or two levels after taking all of them down. But you don't have to. By all means, you could just keep running through here. There's more than a good bit of uh, crafting material through here. There's a couple of items scattered here and there that are a bit harder to notice considering everything is just snowed in. You know, that, that white glow from some of those items does blend in with the snow. can be very frustrating. But I'd essentially say just wipe everything out, make sure you just clear it out, and then we'll be able to get all that loot as quickly as possible. Now we will have another item right there. Couldn't believe this moment. This is uh, something I kept laughing about with this game where I was kind of like, this has uh, more destruction than I've seen in Battlefield 2042. I mean, it's insane how uh, that thing could just start spitting things out. Next thing you know, walls are just coming down from the runes around us. That's a nice little touch to the game. But after we take him out, we'll double back inside of here, and there's going to be one more item, which is going to be a golden rune inside of those runes right there. Ruins. Goodness. Getting the tongue twisters already. But after that, we've got, I believe, two more of these ogres to deal with. Good bit of runes. Might as well take him out or at least once. You know, just get the experience out of it. Then over here, I believe we've got two more of them. Actually, yeah, we've got three left. Now, there'll be a couple of these madness guys over here. Not hard to take them out, but we'll have more than a good bit of crafting material in here that you can grab up off the ground. And over to our left is going to be the uh, one item that we need from this spot in particular. Do be careful with those maddening ogres. That thing can take down your horse fairly quickly, but lucky enough, they can hurt each other with that move. So if you can kind of kite them into each other, they'll make quick work of each other. It's kind of funny. And we'll actually use a strat like this later on with a dragon, which is uh, 
<laughs> unreal. Makes it uh, just about uh, the easiest fight with a dragon I've had all game. But over here, there's going to be more than a few rats in this little pile. Now, one of them dropped me a rune arc. This could happen for you, but we're going to be grabbing up that uh, stone sword key. Now, from this point, we'll start deviling back to the location that we just came from. We've got a dungeon to clear over here with quite the interesting boss at the end of it. Some people may be uh, quite irritated with this boss. It's it's very irritating, but it is kind of easy to take him on. It's something to do with the hitbox. We'll get to it once we get there. But over here on our right, just down below, you can notice it on the map. It'll look like this uh, cavern in a way. Now, I'd suggest taking the lift down. I was just checking this route just to see if there's any loot, but sadly enough, there's no loot going down this way, and we cannot drop down through the bottom of the lift. So you'll want to activate that Lost Grace and pull that lift down for later. Now going in, there's going to be more than a few smithing stones in here. Some that are hanging on the wall. You'll notice we'll be coming up the against the enemy type that's going to be the miners. We're not going to drop down that hole just yet. We'll be heading over to the right. Actually, we should have. Yeah. Well, there's going to be a closed door over there. We'll get to that later on. But we'll be dropping down over here. And then dropping down once more. Lucky enough, no fall damage from this. But just behind us, we're going to have a... Uh, I can't remember what the item is in the middle. But we'll take down those miners. We'll have some more consumable item, giving us that freezing ability that we may want to apply on our weapon. All up to you. We'll take out a couple more of those miners. And I believe on our right side... Actually, not just yet, but there will be a golden rune right there. Now, I picked up a pickaxe from that guy. Don't know whether or not it's that great, but it's it's obviously not an item I'm really uh, looking forward to. But we'll jump down before we go across. It's going to be uh, one of those bigger boy types. He's not very hard to take down. Easy to stagger this guy and get the damage in. But we will get a uh, lord sword from him. I've actually got this from another location. But just behind him, we'll also have some of the smithing stones hanging on the wall. Now, over here on our left, we're actually going to get an ancient dragon smithing stone. It's going to be that top tier upgrade for any of those regular weapons, the ones without the Ash of War on them, but we will be finding one of those somber versions a little bit later on. I don't remember if it was in this video, but there'll be another location that we'll get to from inside here that's going to give us one of those, maybe in a different guide, but that is coming up from this location or a part of the location going forward. But just after that, we'll head back up that ladder and then be able to cross that little uh, path right there. Now, just back here, I believe there's going to be a couple of those smithing stones on the wall. You'll see one on the right over there. We'll need to grab that up. More than a few of the somber smithing stones in here that are a bit higher tier. And then up on top of here, just another one of those miners. Not too hard to take out. Thank God they're easy to stagger. But over there on the left, we will have another one of those smithing stones. Can't remember where that guy came from, but now do be aware. As soon as you grab these up, it will leave a... Sometimes a little white mark right there. It seems like there's another one left behind. We'll probably see it here in a, a few minutes where one of those moments ha happens where I double back and think there's another one. But essentially it's just leaving behind what it already, uh, I believe actually that's the moment right there. It just looks like there's still something there even though we've already grabbed it. But another smithing stone over there on the left. Another uh, one of those bigger boys. Pretty much a joke in my opinion. He's, he's tried to be a boss more than a few times and pfft, Pretty much just made quick work of them every single time. But like I said before, there will be that residual effect on the wall from some of those somber smithing stones, so be aware of that. But on our right, there would be uh, another one of those smithing stones. Now, this will be the point where we finally access that door. Now, it would be uh, a good idea to head back to the uh, Lost Grace itself. Get your health pots back up, maybe level up before you enter into this boss fight. It's not going to be the hardest one, but at the same time, you don't want to have that uh, possibility of losing those runes or... Just not being ready for this boss fight, especially this one in particular being a, a bit more irritating than a lot of other fights. Now straight away he'll do a little laser beam move and then he'll try to hit, whip you with his tail. You really want to get as close as possible to this guy at all times. You want to kind of keep to the side of him. You'll notice whenever he lifts up he has like four glowing hands going on. That's when he's going to slam down and do this echo effect. Very easy to avoid it. As long as you've got the uh, summons taking the aggro, a lot of times the laser beam, whenever he teleports, isn't going to be too hard. 
But you'll notice anytime that you're close, he may do a couple of these moves where he throws some galaxy out to the side. It's just going to be some explosives. But every time you see him either do this move right here where he kind of looks like he's lifting up the ground, you want to avoid that. Anytime that he raises up, he's got four purple hands. He's going to be slamming down, so you want to run away. But for the most part, the most irritating portion of fighting this guy is just trying to hit his little legs or any part of him because they're so tiny. The hitbox is so tiny. It can be frustrating to try and close in and actually land a few hits. Certain moments with the camera angle just doesn't look like it looks like you're close enough, but you're not. And do not lock on the target with this guy because it's just going to lock onto his head. And it's going to be a whole lot harder to actually hit some of the portions of his body. But shouldn't be too hard as long as you're closing in, keeping in that close vicinity. You should be able to take this guy down fairly quickly, especially if you're using summons with it. But we will also get his meteorite ability that you may have seen midway through there where he opens up a bunch of portals and those little purple rocks come flying in. Apparently it's very destructive. I'm not a sorcerer, so I haven't used it, but I believe I've seen a video of somebody using that uh, particular spell and it was quite destructive. Apparently you can hold it and just keep draining your mana and just constantly pelting, but it has a random, uh, I believe it does have a random spawning and landing. It's not exactly a pinpoint type of spell. But from that point, we'll head out and just keep following that left edge all the way until we uh, get to this ledge over here. We're actually going to find a portal over here. Now, I did jump down, but lucky enough, we can jump straight over. Now, at this point, you know, I can never tell whether or not these are real invasions or some of those NP NPC invasions. This may just be another one of those NPC invasions because I get loot out of it. I don't know if you kill somebody, they, you actually get their loot or not. Uh, I'm not 100% certain, but we'll have this, like, blood loss guy. Seems to tie in with the portal itself, so it, I'm more than barely certain that this is an NPC type. Pretty easy to avoid his attacks, and we will get a suit of armor out of him. Now, I didn't check out the suit of armor. I'm not sure if it does anything towards blood loss, but could be a possibility. Now, we have a bloody portal right here that's actually going to take us to a completely different area, just outside the Nocron Eternal City. Maybe you've noticed that there was, like, that hanging... Colosseum or mausoleum type of uh, structure just at the very north portion or up at the top in the distance that you could see. That's essentially where we're going to be going. There's a lot of blood loss in that area. We will not be covering this area in this guide. I'll be making a video on that tomorrow, but we will jump into that portal and actually grab the first lost graze point. That way we can come back to this at a later time, or if you just want to go on ahead and just move on through it, or possibly just finish out this guide and then jump into it. You've got that Lost Grace to portal back in instead of having to run all the way back to that uh, that portal location. Now from this point, we'll head back to that uh, tunnel that we were just in with that giant space uh, base bruh, space boss. And then we'll take that lift back up and then start heading along the left edge again. Now we'll kind of just skip by everything, but we're going to keep maintaining along that left edge. We'll essentially... Get back to the point where we're at that uh, that portal. There'll be a couple of astral projection. Uh, I have no idea where the snail is that's spawning those, but you know, I, I tried looking for it, but they'll spawn over there. But just over to the left, in front of this uh, frozen tree, before we head over to the back, it's going to be another one of those smithing stones, and just above that portal location. Now we'll head over to the right. It's going to be a bear. Do watch out for that, but over here on this downed frozen tree, we'll have another one of those uh, great runes, or heroic runes, to grab up. And over on our left side, we're going to have a statue that we're going to need to take down using one of these bears. Now, you'll notice there's a bear on our right that we can actually aggro, but up at the top here, there'll be one of those small great runes. But just down here is this statue that we'll need to kite one of those bears in with. Now, sadly enough, I I did not see the bear at the top of the hill, so I went all the way back to this one that's just scratching the tree, tried to kite him, kept going back and forth with this. Uh, you know, he kept losing interest fairly quickly. So I, I kept hitting him, kept trying to get him pulled all the way over. I got him pretty far, but he just kept wanting to go back to that tree and keep scratching. You know, life of a bear in this game. But... After a, a long while of trying to kite this guy, I ended up having two bears on me, which is far worse uh, a predicament. And, you know, obviously I aggroed both. Lost the alpaca. It's getting bad right now, trust me. 
I'm trying not to fall over the edge. I'm hell's potting any time that I can, but I hey, appreciate it, Viking. But essentially the best route is going to be that first bear on top of the cliff. You want to drag him down on here. Now, crazy enough, you don't actually have to pull him all the way over there. You know, he does this shout move, which you'll notice here in a second, which is what he does. He just kind of shouts at it, and then boom, we're able to open it up, and we'll be able to grab up the two smithing stones inside. Now, I didn't kill, kill those bears over there. They may also drop some larval uh, tears or possibly something else. It may be a good idea to go back and face them, but at this point, I, I was just like, yeah, no, I'm, I'm not trying to deal with bears right now. But just off to the left of that, we're going to have another one of those turtle bells. Now, this one's going to have a, quite the interesting uh, fireworks display to it. So you do want to avoid that damage, but you're definitely going to want to have to take this one down before heading forward because you definitely don't want to get hit by all that fire coming out of it. it it's a nice uh, change up when it comes to these turtle bells, but at the same time, you really do want to take that out before pushing anywhere forward. Now, you don't have to open it up, obviously. You can take it down and just keep moving on, unless you wanted to duplicate one of those remembrances. But from that point, after taking it down, I went over here to the left, took out some of these uh, astral projection or ghost-like uh, knights and things. But from that point, there's, I believe there may be something down here, but I can't remember specifically. Might not be. Just trying to make sure that everybody's on the same uh, point where I'm following along with. Or if you're following along, lose my train of thought here. But from that point, we'll head back over to the left behind that uh, that turtle bell tower. And over here, there's going to be a building with uh, some type of shield in it. I can't remember the name of it quite right now. But once we head inside there, after a little bit of... Uh, we'll also have a, uh, a woman standing behind. Now, I'm... Uh, Huge fan of Amazon women, but apparently I did not have quite the charisma to make my move in this moment. But this may be a part of some type of quest line later on. If it is, I'll figure it out later and I'll do a, a full-on guide when it comes to that quest line. Since I couldn't figure it out in this moment, just kept moving on forward. We'll get back to it at a later time. But if anybody knows if there is some type of quest line with that woman, please let me know down in the comments. I'll pin that up, make sure that other people get that information. But as we follow along that left edge, we'll also have another one of those somber smithing stones sitting in the chair. And just over to our left, we'll be able to drop down to this area, be a couple of those uh, smaller land squids down here, and a golden rune on our left, and on our right, another gold rune. But we'll come on down here, over on our right, a couple of those smaller land squids, easy to take out, just kind of sweep on by. There's a couple of butterflies over here as well. Might want to grab those up. But over here on the left is where we'll be able to head up and I believe grab up another one of those great runes, possibly. Could have been something else. I don't remember specifically. Yep, it's going to be another great rune. Now we'll just head back on down. Avoid the uh, large land squid. Definitely don't want to get caught up in that. That's uh, a close to insta-death, especially if they stagger you off the horse. But up here on our left, we'll be heading over to the next area that's going to have an... Everjail, I believe that's how you pronounce it, that we'll need to light some candles. But over here on the left, we'll have another one of those golden seeds, and then we'll need to promptly head to the right of this uh, golden seed location. Now, we'll need to head back to that after we grab up the Lost Grace in front of us. Did I not speed this up? Okay. Well, this is one of those moments I should have sped up. But over here on our left, we'll be having another Lost Grace location. That's some poor editing right there. But anyways, we grab up that Lost Grace location and then we'll head back to that golden uh, seed tree over there on the left and we'll keep heading along this left edge over here. Now just in front of us we'll have another one of those uh, God of War type of enemies that's got a chained weapon to their arm. This one's going to be a battle axe with a little uh, a ball at the other end of his chain so watch out for that. He will start swinging it and he does cause some uh, scarlet rot breath. Now he, uh, he'll have some leg armor and he'll also have an axe that does add the uh, scarlet uh, uh, scarlet rot to it. Goodness. Don't know why I can't see that all of a sudden. But over here on the right, we'll have a town that's essentially mm, some type of magical spell over it that's blocking our pathway through certain entrances or certain uh, alleyways, whatever you'd like to call it. Now there's a couple of items that we can grab up inside of here. 
bit more of the consumable and a little bit of the smaller crafting type items. But then we'll head back around the back side of the building. We'll grab up those butterflies and we'll have a black knife uh, suit of armor. Similar to those uh, enemy types that you may have seen or possibly remember from... Um, I'm trying to remember. There's a black knife boss somewhere that's in a black knife dungeon, I believe. I can't remember the name of it. But there's also one guy inside of the uh, Lindell area that we've dealt with. He's quick. He's got the little dagger. Very irritating. But from that point, we'll head over to this point where it's going to give us one of those ever jails. We'll need to activate this. This is essentially going to kind of portal us into an alternate version of the area that we're in, and it'll take away those barrier walls, but we'll need to light up four different candles inside of this area. Now, it took me a moment to uh, kind of recognize what these were, but there will be these black knife guys that are actually go invisible. You'll need best strat. Uh, I'm telling you, it's just, just stand still and listen for them in any direction. If you got headphones on, it's going to be a whole lot easier. You'll be able to kind of get that omnidirectional positioning <clears throat> on where he's going to be coming from. But you'll also notice he'll, he'll make small footsteps in that snow that you'll notice. But if we do kill him, we'll get another one of those glow warts. Now, I was still searching for the candles at this point, but we're, we're about to come up on it. Trust me. Over here on our right, we just already passed it. You know, I'm just kind of looking around. I, I'm trying to see, but boom, just in front of us is going to be one of them. We'll be able to light that one. Now, if you do die after lighting that, it will still be lit, so you won't have to come back to that location. But from this point, you know, it's another one of those moments where I'm just kind of looking around. Don't know where these things are, but they'll essentially be on the rooftops at this point. And over here on our, uh, well, there's also going to be some archers, but we're also, also going to have to deal with another one of those invisible assassin type enemies here in a little bit. But we'll be able to jump up on top of these buildings. You know, I'm taking, taking all sorts of a long route right here, but we're about to face off with another one of those invisibles over here. Would be a good idea to take these guys down, considering they do drop the glow wards. If you want to upgrade multiples of those summons, this is just going to help you out further. And I believe they're either level eight or level nine. It's going to be uh, ideal for you to finish these guys off, especially if you've got some type of summons built. Or going for just making some of those summons even more powerful and just checking them out. But from that point, after we take him down, we'll come back over here to the right and we'll just keep following along. There'll be some darts over on our left, but there's going to be a ladder over here. Do be aware if you've run around the entire city. Yeah, probably. Well, you probably didn't make it to that ladder already. There will be a couple of archers that will have spawned, but you'll spawn back at that Lost Grace. We'll be able to head up and then head over to the right and come around to be able to activate this Ever Jail. Now, if you don't walk around the entire city... And I believe those assassin type guys, if you've already killed them, they're going to be gone for good. We'll be able to just immediately go back to that ladder. No worries about archers this time around. We'll be able to just walk on up it. And then we'll be able to hit the second candle that we'll need to light. Now from this point, you know, I was kind of looking around, seeing where the rest of the candles were. You'll notice there's one over to our right and there's going to be another one over to our left. From this point, we'll need to jump over the ledge right here. And it's going to be on top of this building in front of us over to the left. We'll immediately need to go over to this downed rubble of a building onto this wall. Now, as soon as we jump up on top of this, it's going to be an archer on top of here, and there'll be another one shooting at us from the right. Do be sure to kind of, well, I believe I didn't kill the one down below, but if you do actually end up killing him, we'll be able to head over here to the right, and that one on the taller building is not going to be able to get the angle on us from over here. So this is going to be the third candle. Now we'll need to head back all the way to that ladder that we had on the first one. You know, ideally, I would have liked to have had the footage just immediately jump over. To this. this would probably be the ideal one. Hopefully you watched just all the way through before actually going through it. But ideally, you'd want to go to this one first. Jump over to the right. Take down the archer. And you could take down the archer on the other side. That way you don't have to deal with it going to that third one that we just grabbed. And this is going to be the fourth one. And as soon as we grab this uh, candle light over here, it'll immediately put us into a loading screen. Put us back into the location of the Ever Jail's uh, entrance. And then we'll be able to grab up a little bit of loot from this area. Not too much left over after that. Now, do be sure to get back on Torrent, the uh, alpaca or horse, whatever you'd like to call it. Because this piece of loot... 
would ideally just be an easy jump that I probably spent probably 15 minutes trying to make with, uh, you know, just naked. And I still made it, but, you know, I kind of felt like an idiot when someone in chat just said, oh, yeah, torrent. And I, I didn't even think about it. I thought I couldn't use them. It's one of those, uh, you know, idiot moments. But from that point, we'll have all those barrier walls taken down and we'll be able to walk up to this point. And this is how we're going to get to the Halleck tree. This is going to be the portal taking us to that location. Again, this is another location I'm not going to be covering in this guide. I'll make another video for tomorrow for this area, but we'll grab up that Lost Grace location. That place is very irritating. But just after that, we'll head back to the Lost Grace location just outside that small dungeon where we came up from the Grand, Grand Lift of Rolled. And we'll start to head over to the right side. I'll pop up the map a couple of times. We're essentially trying to get up to the top here, grab up another gold rune, and then we're going to be dropping down and heading over to the left side. We're going to be going off left of the, uh, uh, what is it? The left of that lost grace, essentially. Now there'll be a bit of a cliffside down over here. You'll notice uh, we've got a down, what looks like one of those things that points us towards the dungeon, but we'll keep heading along that left side. And then we'll drop down and then we'll follow the wall or cliffside along that left side until we reach another cliffside. Now there's going to be a graveyard in front of us over to the right. Over here there's going to be another one of those guys that's uh, similar to the, the Scarlet Rot guy that we saw before, the God of War type. We'll get a couple of hammers off this guy and there's more than a few golden runes over here in some of these uh, caskets or tombs, whatever you'd like to call them. But after we kill him, we'll also get, I believe, another piece of armor, which is going to be the helmet, and we'll get the hammer that's also going to do more Scarlet Rot buildup. But after we've taken care of that, start moving forward. We'll continue to keep pressing along that left side, along this left edge of this uh, small cliff side. Continue to try and keep that uh, map up here and there in certain moments, because uh, trust me, it's hard with this field of vision. It's hard to even see where you're going most of the time without looking at that map. That's why we grabbed it up at the very start. Now, just as we hit the uh, kind of drop off of this location, we'll just turn around and head along that left wall. Now, there'll be a health scarab all the way down here along that edge. Now, there's going to be some astral projection. Bigger boys over here. I ended up dying to them, but lucky enough, there was one more item just outside the Lost Grace that I couldn't just you know, put into the guide without it just being a bit confusing, especially right here. But there's going to be a cookbook right here. I'm sure the map location right here. Sadly enough, I couldn't just seamlessly put that into the guide without it being a bit confusing, you know, or the type of cut I'd have to do. But did my best on trying to show that location. Now, from that point, I'm going to be heading back to where my uh, runes are. And then I'll pretty much be Doubling back from the location that we came from, we're essentially heading over to the Lost Grace just beyond that caravan. The one that we picked up at the very beginning that was going to be just at the end of those uh, fireflies. Now, one uh, unique thing over here that I didn't talk about earlier is if you go to the nighttime from this Lost Grace, there will actually be two dark knights riding alongside this caravan. That's actually going to be kind of like a, a double boss fight. Highly suggest just taking on one at a time. They can be quite irritating. You, but they're going to be fairly easy to take down. You just kind of do it on horseback. Get a couple of swings in here and there. Avoid this one with a flail. The other one's going to have, uh, I believe, a halibird. But fairly simple. And if you do knock him off of his horse, do note that uh, you, you kind of want to get that damage in as quick as possible because he can respawn that horse and he will start riding off again. Just kind of don't let up on him as soon as, or even if you don't let up on him, he's still going to be getting back up on that. So you'll just have to get back on your horse, kind of face off with him again. For whatever reason, both of these guys ended up at some point kind of slowly walking back to the caravan you'll especially notice it with the second guy after i swing on him he'll kind of come after me now one thing that's going to be irritating is those crossbow guys will start to notice you they will start to uh kind of hang back and try to take you down as the uh, dark knight's going after you as well but we'll take them down or Essentially try and focus on those uh, crossbow guys or at least kind of aggro the uh, Dark Knight as far away as you can from them. That way you don't have to deal with them. But as you'll notice, he, he starts to, out of nowhere, just kind of keep hovering back going towards that caravan. 
it, it gets kind of ridiculous and easy at this point. He, he just keeps going back for whatever reason. Now, it's going to take a little bit of time. Obviously, we knocked him down, but we're able to get in uh, enough damage at this point. Quick and quickly take him out. But from that, we'll actually get the full Dark Knight armor set from this guy. We'll also get an Ancient Dragon Smithing Stone out of this as well. Another one of those top tier upgrades for some of those normal weapons. The armor itself looks really cool. It's a cosmetic item, in my opinion. It's not as great as my Fat Boy armor. But from that point, you know, I had no health uh, pots left anymore. So we run back to the Lost Graves. You know, level up, use those runes if you can, or if you have enough in order to use it. But from this point, we'll start heading back towards the uh, right portion. And we'll start heading over here to this uh, northern portion of the map, or northeastern. Now we will start heading back into that blizzard type of uh, area of effect. Nope, here on our left is going to be a couple of uh, mage orb things. But over here on our left is another one of those albaneric or albaneric rides. I can't remember the name of it specifically. We'll be getting to that a little bit later in the video. If you already have the Fanged Imp Summon, that's how you're going to unlock that. Didn't have it at this time, but I'll be showing you how to grab that up and unlock that later on. Now from that point, we're just kind of keep uh, going up on the left side of this from that Albaneric Rise. We're kind of trying to get up to the northern portion of this and try to ride that wall all the way down because we've got another dungeon up here. But over on the right, another one of those gold runes, another couple of items, and there's going to be... Uh, pile of uh, rock over here that's kind of carved out we'll need to jump up on top of this that's going to be on our left i believe there's another somber smithing stone at the top of this i believe i do show the map location right there boom then we'll need to just uh, carefully jump on down and start heading up a little bit more to the left or northern portion there'll be another one of those mage orbs come out of nowhere it'll start shooting out some stuff and then just dropping it down directly on top of it just kind of ride on out keep going in swinging a, a good bit but do remember that that fire will still will still keep uh, falling down even if they die now up to the north of us is going to be another one of those firefox uh, enemy types so be ready for that you know i jumped up on top of these stones there's some butterflies up there if you want to grab that up but when i came back down I, you know i got surrounded by these uh wolves and the next thing you know that firefox came out of nowhere already lit me up with some of its magical abilities and just boom like that so be aware that that is going to be coming down. But you definitely want to take out the smaller wolves before you start facing off with the uh, the fire fox itself. Or fire wolf, I don't, I don't even know. It just looks like a fox to me. Now you could take this guy on face to face if you wanted to, but honestly it's going to be a bit easier on horseback, especially with some of the magical abilities he'll be striking you with. He's got a laser beam from his mouth, he's got those swords he can spawn in, and can be easier to kind of dodge some of his attacks, but at the same time, it's all up to your own playstyle how you'd like to deal with it. Now, just behind him, going to get nothing off of that other than runes. There'll be a portal just behind him that we're not going to take just yet. We'll save that here for a moment, and we'll kind of just ride along the wall until we make for this dungeon. Might be a good idea to put a marker down where it's at, but we'll be coming back to that here in just a bit after we get through with this dungeon over here. Technically on the right side, but... It's going to be on the left for us since we're doubling back towards the uh, entrance to this location from that grand lift of rolled. But as you'll remember earlier, we touched that statue. It pointed us in this direction. Over here on the left, there should be a pair of doors. Boom. Finally going to be there. Bit hard to see, so you're really going to have to ride that wall until you find it. But this is going to be a fairly irritating dungeon. There is more than a few of those cat gargoyles in here, but... We'll also have more than a few of those uh, little imp gargoyles as well. But, whoa. Well, oh, also, we're going to have some of those freezing traps, but over here on the right, we'll be able to jump through. Over here on the left, there will be one gargoyle waiting to attack us, but time it right, get in there, attack that turret. We'll bring it on down, and we'll need to attack it again. There'll be another gargoyle up on top of the uh, area that we're jumping over to. We'll need to take that down, but you'll essentially just attack that uh, turret again, be able to jump up on here. Gameplay, when I slow it down, it's going to be a little bit choppy. I had one of those irritating moments with my ISP while streaming this where it just uh, upload basically went to uh, abysmal rates. But luckily, uh, I hit the record button. I was able to get this gameplay. So it's only for a short time through this guide, at least. But in this next room, we'll have another one of those main turrets and another one of those cat gargoyles. 
you know, I can't hate him enough, uh, but lucky enough, this room, you know, the, the turret itself can deal a bit damage to it, and we can get it underneath this uh, low-hanging ceiling, so its jump attacks aren't as, uh, well, unnoticeable since it'll go over our head, but it can't go up that high. Bit easier to time it, get it trapped inside of there, put some damage on it. Then also check every single wall, just in case it's one of those illusionary walls. Sadly enough, not inside of this location, but we'll need to hit that turret. Now, once we hit that turret, it's going to start hitting the left and the right. Might be a good idea to hit it again before we head into that left chamber that we're going into. I'll hit it right here, and sadly enough, I was an idiot. Let it hit me again, but then I hit it again. Bigger idiot. You shouldn't do that before going into this left room. We'll kind of need to, uh, or we'll take some damage if you do before that, so keep that in mind. But on the right before coming in here, we'll have another one of those glow warts. There'll be more than a few of those uh, gargoyle limbs in here. And on our left is going to be another one of those glow boards. Now again, you know, just checking every single one of those walls, just seeing if there's any illusionary, sadly, none to be seen inside of this dungeon that I remember. But this is one of those moments where, you know, keep your health high if you manage to hit that turret again. But you will want to make sure that you hit this turret before going into the right chamber. We're going to need it lowered for this uh, next portion coming up. Actually, you, you probably could be able to hit it from that point, so you probably don't need to do that. Just leave it up, in my opinion. You know, I, I'm overthinking it. It's one of those moments. But underneath this staircase, we're going to be able to go into a next area. But just before that, we're going to have a three-headed cat gargoyle in here. Now, this guy, if he starts doing the three-breath move, it's going to be an instant kill. If it touches you, do avoid that at all costs. Trust me, very frustrating. I hate this type of cat gargoyle right here. He just, he's overpowered with that move, you know. On top of the rest of his moves. But anytime you see him start doing that breath move. Just avoid it at all costs. But we will get an imp head off, him, off of him. That will increase our arcane by two. Another glow board in that room. And some bones. But from this point we'll head underneath the staircase. And we'll start heading through this walkway. There'll be uh, one of those different types of knights. These guys are easier to deal with in my opinion. Very squishy in a way. But on our right another glow board. We'll come up. Uh, blah, blah up out of here. Now we won't take that turret all the way up to the top just yet. Over on our left is going to be a room with two of those knights inside of it, so be aware of that. On the right, another glow wart. Now, best strat in dealing with this guys, these guys, they have uh, some type of spear that throws off that magical ability. You might want to kite them into the hallway. It really does deter their uh, ability to throw those spears in certain moments. They'll get trapped on the wall or hit the wall themselves, but you should be able to take them out fairly quickly. I did get some clean rot uh, greaves off of them, or at least one of them, but another glow board in the back of there. Now we'll need to jump on top of that turret, and lucky enough, I was able to hit it from the top of it on that moment. But we'll also have the boss room uh, lever right here, so now that's going to be open for us. Again, checking for some of those illusionary walls, but none to be seen right here. Now, it would be a good idea if you've made it all the way through there in one run, don't jump into the boss room just yet. You know, head back to uh, that Lost Grace. Get your health pots and then possibly use some of those runes just in case. You definitely don't want to lose them in the boss fight. It's not going to be the hardest boss fight, but at the same time, you know, it's better off to have that level up, that little increase to whatever power you have or whatever stats you're increasing just before jumping in here and all those health pots. Now, we'll basically have one of those... Uh, God of War type of enemies. This guy's very easy to deal with, especially if you get a summons with you. He staggers very easy. A little bit squishy, but we'll have one of those what is it? Great Grave Grieve Glow Warts. Perfect for uh, maxing out one of those summons for yourself. But from that point, we'll immediately just portal back to the beginning of this uh, dungeon, and then head on out. If you get you know enough runes to level up, do that before heading out. Now, I started heading over to the left, but we're going to start heading back towards that portal that we marked earlier. That's going to be our next uh, point of interest. Over here, I believe, we've just got another old fang, uh, a mixed uh, fight with some of those wolves and uh, just regular common civilian enemy type guys. But we'll be doubling back now. Essentially, we've already covered what I was already pushing towards with those crystal snails. We covered that a little bit earlier, but... We'll just head all the way back up there. There's no longer going to be that Firefox, so we'll just be able to push through those wolves. And now we will be next to that uh, minor Erd tree. 
Now we'll have more than a few uh, stone structures over here. You know, I jumped up on top of them, couldn't find anything. <clears throat> I don't even think there was any one of those uh, uh, butterflies on top of this either. So don't even bother jumping on top of these. Trust me, not even worth it. Just trying to make sure everybody can follow along as easy as possible, not making one of those cuts that confuses you. A couple of those Erd Tree uh, warriors over here. But just over on our right, we're going to have the Erd Tree champion. This guy will be able to spit out, uh, what is it, the Scarlet Rot. So anytime he jumps up, he'll start spitting out a cloud of it. Now, not only will it increase the uh, Scarlet Rot on yourself, but if you stand in it, it will do damage over time as well. So do avoid it. Anytime that he spits that stuff out, but it'll only do it in a 180 radius, but you should be able to have enough room in this area and pretty much avoid it as easy as possible. I'd say do this on horseback. It's just a lot easier, especially to dodge those magical ability abilities that he has and to uh, avoid some of his heavy hitting damage, just those swings. You'll be able to wide berth around it, wait for the timing, get in, have a couple of those uh, clean hits, you know, if you get up to the side of him, he, he kind of makes it uh, hard to follow you in a way. So then he'll do his jump attack, do his little Scarlet Rot spit. But we'll get a couple of Crystal Tears out of that. Now from this point, we'll start heading back down. We'll essentially be going for the uh, Frozen River below us. Now over here on the right is going to be kind of like a, a lightning strike area. And there's some type of uh, crafting material over here. Some type of lightning type of crafting material. There's a whole lot of it. I just grabbed up all of it. I, I don't know whether or not it would be quite useful for you. Maybe if you have some of those electric type arrows or you're some type of ranged bow build, that could be helpful for you. But just down the hill and over to the right, we're going to have a couple of scarabs on top of these uh, little stone structures, a couple of somber smithing stones. There'll be another one over on the left. I believe it's another somber smithing stone out of this one as well. Boom, we've got that. We'll have a couple of those frog guys over here. They can be a little bit irritating with their cartwheel, but trust me, once we get to the guide with the uh, blood loss area, you're going to hate them even more inside of that zone. These guys are uh, a cakewalk compared to those. <clears throat> but after we've taken down a, a few of these, we'll start heading down this path over here on our right. It's going to be a uh, purple item over here. I believe it's another one of those butterflies. We'll come up to that here in a second. That one's going to be the bigger boy uh, frog guy. Obviously, he's got his shirt off and loincloth ready. He's hammering it down. He doesn't need it for this frozen weather. But we'll uh, keep heading down. And then over to the left, we'll have a moment where another one of those larger land squids is about to drop down. Do not get caught up by this guy. God, it is frustrating every time that guy takes you down with a couple of those squiggly tentacles. Oh, goodness. I could pop that up on the hub right there. That's some hentai action. But anyways, getting off track of here. After you take down a uh, squiggly armed land squid over here. We'll have another item to grab up. I believe it's just another golden rune. Uh, it might actually be something less than maybe something that's not even even something worthwhile. Goodness, kind of losing my train of thought here. Ah, uh, well, it's going to be one of those uh, types of blood clots. Another type of crafting material. Maybe beneficial for you. I couldn't honestly tell you if it's something uh, for uh, powerful crafting material uh, I barely use it for the most part generally I, I'm just going off the, the brute force of that bloodhound fang now over here there's going to be another one of those statues over here on the left we'll need to you know, kind of bait this crab over He's he seems like he knows what's up but he's got the sleeping ability so do not get caught up on that when he spits out that can be very devastating, especially if he's swinging down with it. But luckily, he just has to walk into it. Doesn't even have to slam down. We'll get another somber smithing stone out of that. And over here on our left, going to be uh, one of those spots where we'll need one of those stone sword keys. Going to be another little dungeon over here. Another easy land squid to take out. You will have to take this guy out before unlocking this, sadly enough. Wish we could just run by him. Because honestly, the runes that we get from this, the amount of time that we spend... Dealing damage to him, it's just, it takes too much time. It's its just not worth it, in my opinion. But in order to make it into this uh, dungeon right here, we'll need to slap that uh, squid on down. Now, this cave, I forgot to edit that out, but pull out that trusty lantern. We'll grab up this Lost Grace over on our left. We'll have another item over on our right. Frozen Stone Dragon, or something along those lines. Sadly, we can't take him down, but... 
as we get in here, there'll be uh, another, a lot of these freezing uh, greases, just given the set ability. But before we uh, push forward over on our left, there's going to be a pack of enemies in here. Not too hard to take down, but there is another uh, consumable inside here for that uh, freezing grease if you really need it. More than a few rats in here do not get caught up by them. Whew. Frustrating to say the least. I can't stand those rats. But over here on the right, another one of those freezing greases, just in case you need it for later on, could be uh, something beneficial for a boss later on. Maybe you need that little bit of extra damage towards one of them later on. But <clears throat> as we push in, go over to the left, we'll have one of those bigger boy Neanderthal monkey types that we'll need to take out first. You don't want to get caught up with that guy. Not as easy to stagger him, but on the right, another one of those golden runes. Then we'll start to push forward. Inside of this next area, trying to remember over on our right we'll have a uh, a spot to jump up on top of and over on our left we'll need to jump over on this frozen structure right here another one of those heroic runes up top there and then over on the left we're going to have a spot that we can jump down to we're not going to jump down just yet you know it's just trying to make sure there's no cuts that uh, get people confused with this just showing it all Straight up, sped up as much as possible. That way we don't take too much time. But over here, we'll have another one of those Neanderthal monkey uh, bigger boys. And inside this room, there'll be another one just in front of us. Be able to take him down fairly quickly as long as you uh, get that damage in as quick as possible. Next one, you know, he's already awake. He's dealing a little bit of damage, doing a little bit of that headbutt action. We got another flying one that's be spitting some arrows out. Watch out for that. Over on our right, we'll have another one of those rune arcs and I believe some type, or it's going to be arrows. Now we'll head back to that hole that we found over on the left side, jump on down there. We should be uh, pretty much straight face to face with the uh, boss fight at that point. But we'll jump up on top of that frozen structure right there, start guiding our sail, uh, garden, uh, guiding our way down, goodness. I'm trying to spit those words out. Now we'll have more than a few aggro uh, jellyfish in here. Not exactly the hardest to destroy. Very easy to uh, dodge their attacks. But I believe they will either cause scarlet rot or blood loss. I did not get hit by them, so I cannot confirm whether or not that is what they uh, build up with their spit or inky, inky mess. I, I don't even know what to call it. But we'll have a hole in front of us. Now I will slow down this footage for you because it is. Uh, we'll, we'll need to take our time here. It's going to be one right there, and then I believe over to our, uh, yeah, our left, we're going to need to jump down over there. We'll need to jump down forward in front of us. There'll be another item to grab up. It's going to be another freezing grease right there. Then it, it looks like you'll take some fall damage from this, but trust me, you're not going to take any fall damage. And we'll be straight into the boss fight itself now. Not exactly the hardest boss fight. You face this guy many times before in multiple different occasions. Sometimes he's a common enemy, so you should know by this point. Very easy to stagger this guy, avoid his damage, but we'll get a legendary sword out of him that's going to be dealing quite a bit of that holy damage. So if you're somebody that's rocking those swords or weaponry with any type of or faith build in general, it's going to be something that uh, will more than likely be worth your while. Now, once we spawn back in, you know, do avoid that guy. Head back to the uh, Lost Grace, you know, be sure to get that level up we're about to face with a dragon. Get those health pots up. Over here on our left, you know, if we run by that land squid, turns out he follows us and he can actually damage this uh, dragon as well. You'll notice in this uh, gameplay right now, it, it makes it a whole lot easier. You know, I, I pop my summons up as well. You know, he's doing his squiggly tentacle attack. He's constantly staggering that dragon, dealing some heavy damage. The dragon starts spitting up magma on top. I mean, it's... It's almost like they're fighting each other. I don't even need to be there. But we'll get that dragon heart out of that. And we'll have another one of those ancient dragon uh, smithing stones up here on our left once we jump up to the bottom of this frozen uh, waterfall. Over here on the right, boom, we got that ancient dragon smithing stone. <clears throat> now from this point, we'll start heading back. Uh, yeah, I thought there was another spot to jump up right there. Turns out couldn't make it. Nothing up there, sadly enough. Over here on our left is going to be some of those smoldering butterflies. So if you need those for any crafting material, do not jump over to these land squids. Pretty much just instant death. Very frustrating. No point to even deal with them. Just keep on moving. 
but we'll follow along that left side and we'll be heading up to the uh, top location where that Albanaric or Albanuic, I, I don't even know how to pronounce it, honestly, that uh, mage tower, rise, whatever you want to call it. But over here on our left, there will be some of those tombstones hanging off to the left. It's going to be another uh, old fang down this, but we will actually uh, get another dragonfly head out of this guy. Or do we? I, I can't remember now. I think you can loot him. Yeah, we'll be able to loot him. I don't think I looted him. That's a mistake on my point. Now, I did not kill this mage ball. I don't know if it'll actually drop some loot. I started taking some damage from it, and I'm just like, you know what? You know, I'm not uh, having another moment where I get uh, where I have to come all the way back up here and grab my uh, runes, essentially. But over to our right is where we'll jump down. And right here is going to be, I believe, another old fang. You know, I'm not sure how valuable they are, but had to make sure it wasn't something of a valuable loot itself, but we'll be able to jump down over in front of that onto that next tombstone. And then from this point, where was I headed? Oh, yes, over to our right in front of this tree where we uh, were just behind it. We're going to have another one of those smithing stones. Now, just after that, another location that I was not able to kind of like smoothly transition into this guide, but I'll show you the location as soon as we grab the items. Another stone sword key essentially just in front of that tree that we just came from just across the river. That's where it's going to be. But now we need to go and get the uh, fanged imp uh, summons. We'll head back to the Ray Lucaria over at this back uh, Lost Grace. We won't hit that uh, sigil in the middle of the road. We'll just run straight by it. And down here is going to be a vendor that actually sells the uh, fanged imp summons for us. There's a couple of items that he also has. You know, you could get the lost ashes of war from him and also stone sword keys and a cookbook. But then from that point, we'll head back to the lost grace just down the road from that albaneric uh, rise or albaneric. Goodness. We'll pop on that fanged imp summons and then we'll just ride on back up to the top, right up to that rise. Now, what we'll essentially need to do is pretty much head uh, just to where the statue is, just left of that rise, and then we'll pop the summons out. We'll aggro one of the uh, fanged imp uh, gargoyles just at the back, let him attack him a little bit, and then as soon as we kill it, it'll just open the door up. Kind of ridiculous how easy that is. But. Once we head up this way, we'll have, I believe, I can't remember if it was another legendary spell. Um, no, it was going to be a talisman, that's right. We have one that greatly increases the potency of our sorceries. Could be great for some of those sorcerers out there. Now that's going to be the end of the consecrated uh, snowfield guide. Bit of a larger area, but now I've got to get to work on that howling tree area and that blood loss area. Can't remember the name of it. But you know the one I'm talking about through that blood portal. we got to get that one done. They both have uh, very unique bosses in them that are going to be beneficial for a lot of people, including that Halig Tree one. Uh, whew. I'll tell you right now, that's a, that's a boss you really don't want to face off with, but apparently the weapon it drops from it, unbelievable, and we'll get a solid great rune out of that. But I'll be jumping onto that. Hopefully that'll be up at least by midday, if not the early morning of Saturday. I know I'm driving, well, it's already 1.49 a.m. It's already Saturday right now, but I'm jumping straight into work on that. If you'd like to see some of this content live, hit that link down in the subscription or description. My goodness, losing my train of thought here. Follow me over at Twitch. Going to be streaming a lot more often here in the coming future. Past week's been very busy. It's pretty much like I've had to cut time from the stream in order to make most of these videos and kind of get most of them out. But Saturday night, we should be rocking it in back in again for those eight hour streams going in shouldn't take me too long you know I've kind of been doing a bit of catch up with some of the uh, video footage lots of hours to compile down into these but we're bringing them out as fast as we can for you and making sure that we get them at least in by the weekend I know a lot of people will be jumping on for this but that being said hope you've enjoyed it hope it's helped you out and have a good one